Hello my friends, welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. We decided it's time to add another cookie to the list of our wonderful sweets such as the chickpea cookies and the raisin saffron cookies and we already have videos for those, I'm sure you've watched them. This time we're gonna make Persian rice cookies together. Iranians call them Nun Berenji, Berenji being the word for rice in Persian. It's a very simple cookie recipe with wet and dry ingredients being mixed together and some Persian characters like saffron and cardamom and rose water added and we have our cookies. So let's get started here. We're going to start right up with our star of the show which is the rice flour, right? It's a little coarser than your average um, wheat flour. So we're going to sift it nevertheless. There you go. So we're gonna make sure our flour is sifted. I'm going to sift it into this large bowl, but then return it because I will need the large bowl for creaming the butter and eggs. So I'm gonna leave that here. The other dry ingredients are our salt and powdered or ground cardamom. Now you can buy ground cardamom like so, and it's quite expensive. I buy cardamom pods from the Mediterranean or Persian markets, and I grind it in a spice grinder I have. Basically, give it a little stir, because when you're mixing it with your hand mixer, this all gets mixed up as well. So this is our salt, cardamom, and flour. We're gonna put this aside. Now we're gonna concentrate on the wet ingredients, and we're gonna do it in this big bowl, because when you're using the hand mixer, stuff gets thrown around. You don't want it to get on you and on your kitchen. So you want a bigger bowl with higher sides. I have the recipe below, by the way. This has been softened. You can use uh, ghee if instead of butter, you can use ghee. Um, and you can also use vegetable short shortening, but I prefer butter or ghee. It gives it a better, richer flavor and the color is a little darker, which is nicer. There you go. So we put the softened room temperature butter in here. We're going to add our sugar to that. We're going to sift the sugar as well over this butter. There you go, like so. We have our butter and powdered sugar here. I start on low speed to get things going because I don't want a plume of sugar dust in my face. Once we are about half a minute into this, we can increase the speed and get a more thorough mixture here. Okay, we're gonna increase the speed a little bit. As you can see, it's already creaming. All right, this looks pretty well mixed right now. What we're gonna do is we have two egg yolks we're gonna add, try to add, one of them broke actually, so I'm gonna try to add one yolk at a time, like so, there you go. Okay, that's about a yolk. We're gonna add the second yolk. Repeat the process here. Scrape down the sides one time or twice during this process. That helps to make sure everything is well distributed. This is the spot where I also add my saffron and the rose water in there. I have my saffron solution. 
The recipe for saffron solution is very simple, about quarter of a teaspoon of ground saffron. Don't use the saffron threads. Quarter teaspoon of ground saffron with about four to five tablespoons of hot water and you let it sit at least five minutes to brew, if you will, to get all of the color and aroma out of your saffron. And this is what it looks like. I always keep, because I use it for rice and stews and, and, and desserts, always have a container like this in my fridge. Um, so this is half teaspoon. There you go. Now, I baked this cookie uh, long enough that I know that's the amount of color and, and aroma from saffron I need in it. Experiment and see if you need more or less. Uh, that's pretty standard if you're gonna make it the way you like it. This is the rose water. Now, the thing with rose water is not all people like it. I know my son is allergic to it and my wife doesn't like it. I like it personally, but, but that's two to one vote. So we have traditionally not used a lot of it, but this cookie needs some rose water, right? This is about a teaspoon of rose water that we put in here. And we're going to continue creaming this and mixing it. I can smell the saffron and rose water already. Okay. See the color is already kind of that standard saffron color. So now we are ready to add our flour mixture. Remember we added salt and ground cardamom in here. And so I'm going to basically add it in three installments. Put about a third of it like so, sprinkled over. And I'm gonna, same thing I did with powdered sugar when we started. Start on the slow speed to make sure it doesn't throw the flour dust around. Last installment of flour in there. And we're gonna add the little bit of water, a teaspoon of water that we said we we're gonna add. This teaspoon of water is based on my experience making this dough so many times. It does need a little bit of moisture for the final texture to work. If you were someone who added more rose water, then um, that would make up for the moisture that you need. There you go. See, this is coming together pretty well. We're going to uh, mix this long enough to not see any spots of white dry flour in here anymore to make sure you get everything together see this look see we get in there prop very close to the texture we want all right Dough is basically well mixed and ready right now. Look at this. See, this is the exact consistency that we're looking for. We're going to gather it up, kind of make sure we give it a little flip. You can use your hand with gloves on or a spatula like I'm doing. What we do is we use plastic film like so I would just drop this in the middle of this plastic wrap kind of give it a ball shape make sure it's all together bring this over bring the flax up there you go that's what we're looking for and then basically this is ready to go in the fridge I would say overnight or up to 24 hours. 
If you have to make this a few days in advance for a party or something you're planning, you've got a lot of stuff to make, you can make this a few days in advance, two to three days in advance, it's fine. And then we're gonna just let it chill and all the flavors to melt. When we come back, we're gonna make our cookies. Our dough has been chilled overnight and I let it come to room temperature for like 45 minutes and this is what you get. Look at this. See, this is now soft and, and we can start working with it. Now, I don't want it to go dry as I work um, with the dough. So I just open a corner of it like so. The amount of dough you need for each cookie needs to be smaller because these crumble easily kind of like chickpea cookies. You want to be able to take one bite usually, maybe two. So this is a two teaspoonful measuring spoon. And that's how much of this dough we're going to get for each cookie. Look at that. Do this and then make a ball out of it. And once you get used to this amount of dough, you don't need to continue using this. But for the first few, we'll use it. I'm going to use my thumb to kind of flatten it a little, put a little more flour on there, and then I use the side of my chef's knife to kind of flatten it a little more. Look at that. This is the size we're going for. I told you earlier, you, you have options to, to put uh, markings and designs. You can use commercial cookie molds with designs. If, if, you, if you have relatives who brought you a little little presses for cookies from Iran with traditional designs that's wonderful I made this with some clean wire look at this we just like this little curly cue that leaves this design on the cookie look at this and that neat and that's your little Persian rice cookie noon bear and G now let's do another one two teaspoons and I just make a ball out of this. Pull a little flour, rice flour down. Put a little on it. Kind of flatten it. And then I use the side of my knife to kind of go like this. And if it sticks, see a little tap will release it. No problem. Again, like I said, the side of a knife or fork or anything you have will leave some design and you just keep repeating that pattern you got yourself decorations see these little specks in the dough these are little fragments and chips from from the cardamom when I ground it in the, in the spice grinder because I use whole pots to make my own ground cardamom they add to the flavor ultimately so it's okay I told you you can put any kind of design on your cookie. Check this out. I actually went in my tool shed and made a carved out of this piece of wood, which was another cookie mold, by the way. Using my tools, I carved out uh, this flame design, which is in our Cafe Bagheri logo, if you've noticed. This is what I'm going to use on this cookie. Look at that. I've flattened this cookie, right? and it's the size I want it. I put a little bit of flour on it so it doesn't stick to my mold. And look. Check this out. Yep, that's what we're going for. The standard decoration for the top of these cookies is poppy seeds. You can put nuts, crushed pistachio nuts, or a number of other things, but poppy seeds are standard. You just put a little bit on them, like so. Isn't that pretty? And it will enhance the design that you, the grooves that you put in there, like so. I'm not gonna put any on my 
Cafe Bagheri logo cookies because I just like it the way it is. All right. So I'm gonna finish this and we're gonna put them all in the oven. We have our cookies decorated. I have my oven preheated at 325 Fahrenheit. Based on my experience with this recipe and in my oven, it takes 22 minutes at 325. And I've always said it's different in every oven. Start with 20 minutes and then go from there. And I'm sure you're gonna do great with these. 22 minutes. All right, our cookies are done. It took 22 minutes to bake them. Here it is, check this out. See, at 22 minutes in our oven, they're perfect. You see a little bit of darkness around the edges and that's what you're looking for. They're soft right now. We're gonna set them right here and give them about 20 to 30 minutes to firm up and then we're ready to serve them. And you can keep these cookies in a Tupperware or any kind of container outside of your refrigerator on a countertop or in your pantry for up to three days. And they're gonna be fine. So you can make these cookies even smaller. Um, this is a batch I made with just one teaspoon of dough. And this is a comparison with uh, the ones we made uh, with two teaspoons of dough. And I put more saffron in there, hence the difference in color. Make these cookies. Send me pictures on my Instagram account, at Cafe Bagheri. Thank you for watching tonight. If you liked what you saw right here, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I know you have, but just in case, please subscribe. Hit that little bell button so you and I can keep in touch. And I look forward to seeing you right here at Cafe Bagheri very soon. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. Thank you. I need to get a cookie, but I have to wait about 20 minutes.